today we're going to take you to an attraction that is in our hometown or our backyard as we like to call it. At this location, 4595 Cochrane Street, stands a fenced structure behind which there's a collection of artworks, it's folk art, remnants of buildings that have been built from bottles and discarded objects. And this is the home of Grandma Prisby's Bottle Village. So who is Grandma Prisbury? She is Tressa Prisbury, and she was born in 1896. She was an artist, a collector. She built those uh, bottle villages, the structures that she built. She was a daughter of German immigrants, but she herself was born here in the United States. And she is the folk artist. It is Grandma Prisby that built and created this entire it's her home. It was her home, but she built and created all of it. Yeah, and we'll talk about how it came to be. And Grandma Prisby is not with us anymore. In 1946, she settled here in what was called Santa Susana, now called Simi Valley. And she met her second husband, who was Albert Prisby. And they bought this land. It was one third of an acre. And the lot that they bought was 40 feet wide and 300 feet long. And this was the beginnings of Bottle Village. Mm -hmm. In 1956, at the age of 60, that's when she began to build this little village of hers. And she continued building the village until she could no more, basically, until she had to leave this property and go live with her daughter in San Francisco. Yeah, it was interesting to me when I learned recently that she was 60 years old when she started mm -hmm. to create this thing. So let's kind of see if we can paint a picture of some of the things that Grandma Prisbury had created. Yeah, and I guess like what you would see if you have a chance to yeah. go here. So there are mosaic pathways that have an incredible amount of items just embedded in them. There's lots of old tiles, broken tiles, but there's also license plates, scissors, toy guns, toys, other types of toys. Uh, uh, what else? I mean, there were so many things you could find in there. I actually found out of some kind of, I don't even know what it was, some kind of bead-like something that she actually spelled out Bottle Village in one of the mosaics. This is what? This is called Bottle Village. B-O-T-T-L-E. B-I-L-L-A-G-E. -E. Good job, Julie. It's like the Where's Waldo. <laughs> There's just so many things that are in there that the car parts and yeah, it's like just everything. It's like anything that would have been in the garbage in the 60s that was kind of flat-ish that she could embed into the cement. Yeah. She did. And she you know, did. You, you walk into the property and you're just walking on this pathway that's a piece of art. It's a piece of art and it's a piece of history. Because yeah. some of this stuff is really old. Mm -hmm. And we were finding license plates, you know, back in the 40s and, and uh, from different areas of the country that they just don't, they don't make them that way anymore. Yeah. There was one that said it was made in prison, made oh, by yeah. the prison, so, you know. Part of this pathway also had the four playing cards as a walkway and they represented the suits of the playing cards. So there was the clubs and the spades and the hearts and the diamond. And those were also constructed out of just stuff. Stuff. And kind of to yeah. form to make those images. And I think yeah. each one of those was probably what you say, like maybe four feet by four feet. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They, were very, they were large. And uh, she got inspired when she went to Las Vegas. So she decided to put that down onto the walkway. Tiles. This was, this was the old, because there's an entrance here. Oh, you think that's maybe where the trailer used to sit? Yeah. I wonder Mosaic if they... walkway, it says, old trailer enclosure. Yeah. Yeah. There's a large wishing well, and it's made from just hundreds and hundreds of blue milk of magnesia bottles. I find probably one of the freakiest looking parts of Bottle Village is her doll collection. This could give people nightmares. They call it the Parade of Dolls, but these dolls 
could be found in horror movies. I mean, they just look bizarre. <laughs> yeah. There's a section up in the front where she's got like the doll heads on sticks. Yeah. And, and it's like this, yeah. uh, it's like instead of like flowers on stems, it's doll heads on sticks. And kind of like to your point, they're like freaky looking doll heads. Yeah. And as a matter of fact, we saw a album cover that oh, had yeah. that image and some other stuff on Wall of Voodoo, I believe, was the band. So they're the, the band that had the song, I think, in the 80s, Mexican Radio. The cover of it uh -huh. is these heads, the heads. from Bottle Village. Mm -hmm. She almost strikes me as like an original pioneer of that nomad lifestyle because she also did have a trailer and was making her way slowly westward yeah. without a no house money, to live in. Yeah. No nothing. I mean, she didn't have anything but seven children to feed. As you said, she was moving her way westward and she just worked in restaurants as a waitress or at points she was a bar pianist. And she ended up, as she moved her way west, being a parts assembler for Boeing in Seattle. And this was during uh, World War II. So as she said about this, she didn't have a model. She didn't have a plan. She just went about trying to make something from nothing. She and her husband lived on the property in her trailer. And the story is that when they arrived here, she took the wheels off the trailer to make sure that they weren't going to meander around the country anymore. She wanted to set her roots where she was. And so the wheels came off and then this was home. And they were in this situation where they spent most of their money on the land and they couldn't even afford cement blocks for fences or whatnot. So she thought of, you know, bottles were this item that she might be able to use to construct her fencing and things that she wanted on the property. Because they were everywhere. There was a plenty of them. Yeah. So when she saw that there was great numbers of these bottles, it just popped in her head and use what I have. Mm -hmm. Use what's here yep. and start building. So she completed a 30 foot long wall out of glass bottles, built a six by 12 room on the back. And that was the beginning of Bottle Village. We have the Leaning Tower of Bottle Village, which is just constructed uh, from a larger base and it just kind of goes up and up and up and gets the diameter, gets less and less and less until they get to the top and it's just embedded with old Legos and, and just all kinds of just odds and ends and that. Some old costume jewelry hanging from it. I mean, she just, whatever she has, she used. Yeah. Now she was also, I believe, a horticulturalist, right? I mean, she, yes, had, a, yeah. she had a garden. Did she not? She did. She I, had. I, I showed it to you. She had an amazing spring garden. She had, yeah. So she was a wit too. Yes, she was. So, so she, describe the spring garden. She Julie. knew. She knew comedy, I believe. So you had made some pun about you know. Oh, look at this. Here's the spring garden, and I walked over and there's these gigantic coils of metal springs mm -hmm. that are just in the dirt there. In the dirt, sitting on the dirt, and that was her spring garden. Yep. <laughs> so, and she did at one point have plants growing in that and they would grow through these coils and that was her spring garden. Yeah, I read that she was big on cactuses because she, uh, she felt that most other kind of plants she might not be able to take care of properly, but cactuses could survive just about everything. So there's a, a bit of those yeah. on the property. Yeah. The smallest bottle is about one inch long and the largest is a three gallon whiskey bottle. We saw a lot of those. Mm -hmm. There was a part that was right next to the playing card section of just old television tubes that just kind of lined the area between one pathway to the playing card pathway. Some of these buildings are halfway falling down. There's no roofs. They do have one called the Roundhouse that is pretty much intact, um, that they still have some furniture in it and some pieces in there, but you can't go in. Yeah, and the sides of that is like entirely made out of bottles. Yeah, all these structures are entirely made out of bottles that are just um, stacked up with mortar in between them. And when you have lights on too, they have some pictures where she would have lights on the inside and the uh, light coming through the bottles is just really cool. She was a big collector of stuff. One of her first collections ended up being a pencil collection. She ultimately would have 17,000 of these, but she took up collecting pencils when she was still living in her trailer because she said this is something that she could collect that wasn't gonna take up a lot of room. 
So this is before she had 17,000 of them. But there's a bottle house that was constructed on the property to house her pencil collections and her pencil art. And that was called the Pencil House. And when we were there, they had displays of some of this pencil art. Pencil art, which has been displayed at the LA Museum, mm -hmm. which is very cool. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, uh, that's gotten around. She had a chapel, too, and it was one of those, you know, all religions type of chapels. So mm -hmm. she had a Buddha, she had a cross, she had a, a statue of Virgin Mary, she had some other items that mm -hmm. were from every religion, they said. So Grandma Prisby died in 1988. She was 92 years old. And a few years after that, we had a very devastating event in Southern California. You and I lived through it, and... Um, this is an event that haunted me until the day that we moved to Ohio. This was the 1994 Northridge earthquake. Mm -hmm. It was an immense shaker. If you've not been through an earthquake, I don't even know how to describe it. If you've been through a big one, it can be a kind of traumatic experience that stays with you for a long time. But when the earthquake happened, and you can imagine Bottle Village, you know, not the way this thing was constructed and there's not rebar between concrete blocks or anything. It's just glass and mortar. There's a lot that crumbled. Okay. There's a lot that went to the ground. There's a lot that was lost. Surprisingly, there was a decent amount of what Grandma Prisbury built there that did survive. And so we see that today. But when you step on the property, there are bins on the side just filled with glass bottles that were the casualties of the Northridge earthquake that I think the vision and the dream is that if someday, if funding came to be, that those could be kind of reconstructed. I don't know if that'll ever happen, but they kept the remnants of what fell apart. Mm -hmm. We also bought a book while we were there. there. There was actually a young lady by the name of Kathy Hoffer who was present and she had her books. So we had her sign a book that we purchased and it's a very short read, but it is extremely interested in, in terms of, it is the words of Grandma Prisbury. It is a really nice book to have, especially if you grew up in this area as I did. So in 1972, she had to sell the property. Somewhere around that time, there was a committee formed, which is the Preserve Bottle Village Committee, which I believe still operates today. Mm -hmm. And ultimately, they assumed ownership of the property and they've managed it ever since. And Grandma Prisbury would later continue to live in maintain and conduct tours of the village and she did that until 1982. So what remains of the village today is a federally recognized California historical landmark and it was listed on the National Register of Historic Places in 1996. You know we're able to view it today and admire it today and yeah, yeah and, it, and it is very striking. But you have to look at it through a prism of it being folk art, it being something that was the heart and soul of a person. And when you look at it that way, you can embrace it. Yeah. And appreciate it. Absolutely. I think a reminder to people that even if you're later on in life, you can still create something, you can make a mark you can make an impact and she she's probably you know when i think about people who left a mark on our city she's up there absolutely yeah, yeah. so grandma prisby once said anyone can do anything with a million dollars look at disney but it takes more than money to make something out of nothing and look at the fun i have doing it i love that so although the property is closed, it can be visited by appointment. There is a website, just look up Simi Valley uh, Bottle Village or Grandma Prisbury's Bottle Village. You will find in, any information that you need in regards to visiting this wonderful historic uh, landmark in the city of Simi Valley. Oh. For now, we wanted to share 
this very unique attraction that is here. It's something that if you find yourself in the area, you can drive by on Cochrane Street and even just stand outside the fence and look at what's on the other side. And there are rare anymore, but it seems like maybe once a year or once every other year, the committee has some kind of event where they open the gates and multiple people can enter the property. And we've been through a, at least a couple of those over the past few years. Mm -hmm. And uh, to me, this is one of those places that as long as we have the opportunity to see this, I want to take advantage of it because I don't know at some point what else will crumble, what else at some point the city will declare. And hopefully the, the National Historic Register marker will keep it preserved. But sometimes you, know, you never know how things mm -hmm. go either. So mm -hmm. a very unique, a very remarkable attraction that's in Simi Valley, California. So we were happy to share this with you. And I don't think maybe we stop enough to think about the effort that it does take and the imagination and the creativity to create something out of mm -hmm. nothing, mm -hmm. you know. So yay for Grandma Prisbury. She uh, left her mark in this world and uh, not many people get a chance to do that. So it's pretty cool. And I think it would be fair to call her Simi Valley's grandma. Yes. Because everybody called her Grandma Prisbury. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs>